Hi everybody, welcome to my beginner's guide to modding on your Nitrado private DAISY server for PlayStation or Xbox. And this video is really for people who've really, you've just bought your server um, on the Xbox store for an Xbox or probably on the website um, if you're on PlayStation and uh, you really want to be doing all this stuff on your laptop. Um, I know people sometimes have only got access to a phone. You're a bit limited. Some of this stuff you will be able to do, but this is really for people who are going to be working on a laptop as well. And so what we're going to be looking at in this video is, and I will put timestamps in the description down below on YouTube, we're going to be looking at some general settings, how you control access to your server, how to change the day and the night cycle. Um, we're going to be looking at automated tasks to make your server run better. Uh, we're going to look at the file browser where we really start getting into the, uh, the juicy stuff where we talk about how you can change your server so you'll have undamaged loot, so you can change the loot quantities, how you can add secret items, uh, how you can have magazines spawning in full, how you can have guns spawning in with mags, how you can increase the helicopter crash spawn sites, you can be able to have vehicle spawning complete, and how you can change item spawn areas. And then we're also gonna be looking at the reinstall process to get all this working. And then finally, we're gonna look at the next steps where you can, uh, you can take things um, take things to the to the next level because i would always say with modding on daisy servers on nitrado or anywhere else as well take small steps at a time if you can um that's always the best thing so here's my here's a kind of fresh server here down there nitrado.net game server this is the one we're going to be playing with so i'm just going to click on this uh, gears icon here to get into the web interface and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go into and we're just going to have a look in the general settings because there's actually quite a lot of powerful stuff you can do in here. So this particular one, this is where you're going to change, you know, the the name of your server and or the map. So the first thing you can do is you can choose to have your server either as Chernerus or Livonia, which is called Enoch, um, and then you would restart it and you'd be on Livonia. So my host name is one. T scale speeder gaming like that and you can control access to your server with a password or a whitelist so a whitelist is just the list of people who uh, are allowed onto the server um, or a combination of the two I tend to think that the whitelist is the best way if you've got a list of friends that you just want to have on because it's gonna be fairly small or, or just yourself if you're doing a server for a large group of people who you want them to come in, you know it's almost public, but you don't want anybody coming in. Um, but you don't want to be constantly trying to add people to to a whitelist. You know, use a password. Now, in this case with this server, it's only going to be me playing on it. So I'm going to go straight down to the whitelist here. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put scale speeder because that's me. Okay, I'm just going to save that. So that way. When I find this in the server browser and I click on 1T Girl Speeder Gaming PS4, I'll be able to get in without having to put a password in. Now, ser server time multiplier, really important one this one, because um, especially for, for new people to Daisy or people who played it for a while like myself, playing at night isn't always that fun. Um, especially if you've bought a server so that you can have almost like a single player experience where you don't really want to be bothered by you know getting into fights or anything like that you just want to enjoy the adventure of daisy you want to explore the map you want to know how to get to ne to, to survive and play in the game all of a sudden the night comes along for a few hours and you're like oh you know it slows everything down so the server time multiplier you've got two settings you've got the general multiplier which affects day and night and the one that just affects the night so what I do with my servers is I have a server multiplier of two okay to start off with so that means time runs twice as fast so instead of being a 24 hour day it's a 12 hour day so we have six hours a day six hours a night to start off with but then you have your m night multiplier and what I do with this one is I have this up at 30 okay and what that means is so it's 30 times it's twice as fast and then it's 30 times as fast for night which means the nights last about 15 minutes so if it starts getting dark I just head inside or anybody on my, my discord server private server they just head inside you go and make a cup of tea or you log off and by the time you come back it'll be daytime again happy days you can crack on so 
use system time and custom server time if yeah I would just leave these as use system time persistent server time uh, I would stay with that um, so that if you log off and it's daytime you'll log back on um, uh, uh, sorry if the servers restarting it will start at the same point um, now we've now got some options that directly deal with gameplay for yourself and the people on your server so deactivate third person so this you could force the game if you put a tick in here you could force the game to, to not allow people to to go to to third person it'd be a first person only server but my private servers they're all really for adventure and survival not PVE so I'm not bothered about that you could deactivate the crosshair if you ticked here so a bit more bit more difficult to aim um, so we detect that now reduce log output if you've got a server that's going to be full with lots and lots and lots and lots of people like you know maybe up to the maximum I think it's 60 isn't it or something like that um, you may want to leave this ticked however if you do when you get used to using the logs to see what people are up to especially if you've got rules on your server <laughs> where you want to see what people are doing and where they have been you don't want to have that ticked and then what you want to do is you want to come down here and you want to log damage, log placement, log base building, log player list. So that means you, there's a, a little file that your server is updating as people are playing. And if they get damaged, it goes onto there. If they build something, it'll go onto there. If they put something down, like a tent, it will log it. And it will give you a list of the people and where they are. I think it's every, yeah, it's every five minutes. So that can be useful. Um, they're a little bit tricky to look through but again that's for another video but at least if the files are there you can look at them now these files they only last a couple of days so they don't go back very far so if there are problems on your server that you need to respond to and you need to check things out about what people have been up to you need to check them fairly quickly now let's go up to, let's go back up to this one reset mission XML to default now what this does is this is the this is the um, emergency button so in the course of this video you're probably going to be doing bits of it at a time and then going in and testing um, if things stop working and you can't figure out what you've done and most things is to do with spelling mistakes you'll change something in one of the files we're going to look at in a bit and you'll miss out a piece of syntax you know you'll you'll add an extra full stop or you'll miss out a arrow um, bracket an angle bracket or something like that if you tick that and you, rest you save down here and you restart the server that will take all those files that you've changed it will change them back to the vanilla to the original files and things should start to get back to normal um, so you know, that's a very very important button and then we've got night lighting so you can make the night darker or personal lights actually I prefer it like this I like my nights to be very very dark even though they don't oh, last very long and then we've got the ban list. So if there's people in your community who you definitely want, want to ban, so, um, now we've got a white list. It's not, not, not that important. But again, if you're using a situation where you're controlling access to the server purely with a password, if there's people you don't want to let back on because passwords can get let out, can't they? People can share them um, accidentally or deliberately, but you can put people's name on the ban list and uh, they won't be able to get in. Now, a little word actually that I'll, I'll say now as well is that when I'm working and uh, we'd save those changes, when, when I'm working on this server and we're doing mods, it's very difficult to do these things if you're working on a live server with people on it. So that if you've already got a Nitrado private server and people are on there having adventures and collecting loot and building stuff, you don't really want to be mucking around with the files too much because with some of the modifications that we do um, you, you're going to be restarting an awful lot which annoys people you know say imagine someone's driving down the road in a car and you restart the server you know chances are when they spawn back in they're probably going to crash and die you know it's probably not really good and you could argue yes you can um, you can have little notifications that pop up into the left hand corner of the screen but you'll notice in this video I don't talk about how to do those and how to mod them it's because nobody reads them because they're tiny if you play console on a TV screen these little red things that appear in the corner I think they break immersion a little bit but you don't read them anyway once they start popping up so so I don't really talk about them so you want to minimize that also 
a few of the modifications that we're going to do in in this video as well they really require a fresh install so that means part of the install process and we're going to do this at the end is to go through and wipe the server and start it with our fresh files that will install the the mod that we're putting into place so bear that in mind it's always better to do this without anybody playing on it you do all the mods you test them a little bit with yourself or with some friends and then you make them go public you know don't try and do this um, with people on it now I know sometimes you're going to be doing that um, and basically if you're just changing things like loot quantities you know that will work but if any if it comes to anything like the bigger items like changing um, car spawns or zombie spawns or things like that then you really need you really need a fresh install so they're the basic settings that you can go through and change so the other thing we're going to look at now is the automated tasks now the automated tasks are very important because what these do is in this case with the nitrado private servers is we're telling the server to restart and if you've played daisy at all you'll know it can be quite buggy and you get situations where the game slows down or you won't be able to get items out of a um, backpack or you won't be able to pick them up and sure as a player you can log out or log in again but over time what happens is there's various memory leaks and things that if you, if you just let the, the, the server the computer that your version of daisy is running on run and run and run eventually it will just crash and it might do something like a hard crash where it just stops and doesn't restart by having an automatic restart routine you can it's just going to restart it's not wiping anything it's just stopping and restarting a bit like your computer you know when they tell you to well have you tried turning it off and on again <laughs> this is what you're doing so i've got mine uh at the moment it's because this was a test server it restarts well every six every four every six hours yeah six o'clock twelve o'clock six yeah so it's every four every six hours it restarts so four four times a day it will restart probably with a normal server maybe only twice a day will be good enough um but if you do lots of modifications then maybe four times a day could be good and it's dead easy to do so you'll see here at the top this is the bit that where you add stuff so you would just say at minute zero at every and then you put the hour that you want it to happen in say I want it to happen at four o'clock I want to restart the game server obviously you could just stop it for if you want to restrict access I guess and I don't know whether these restart messages work or not and then you just add that give it a couple of seconds and there we go there's my new so at four o'clock in the morning um, and it's local time to your server so my server's in London I think so it will be um, we're not in British summertime, are we? So it'll be GMT that will then restart the server. And make sure you tell all your people, you know, that this is what's going to happen so they know to expect it. And after a few days, um, people know what to do. Right, let's move on. Let's just get rid of that because I don't want to have that one on. There we go. Right, let's move on to the next subject. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to have a quick look at the file browser. So if we go over to tools and we click on here. This is the engine room of the changes we're going to make. Now this one says Daisy missions, so you click on there, and then uh, it says Daisy Offline Plus. It will say I think it says Enoch if you're working on a uh, Livonia server. And let's just click in. Just, just we're just going to have a look round at the moment, just to kind of see what you're working with. And what you can see is you can see lots of files, and these are all .xml files. So they're kind of they're just like text files with lots of uh, with lots of information in. And if we go into this folder here, DB, let's go into this. We're just going to have a look at this one. We're not going to do any editing. We're just going to look at it. Okay. So if you just sort of click on it, and this is the online editor. We're not going to be using the online ed editor when we uh, when we do our changes. But I just kind of want to show you and kind of talk about what we're getting into so what happens with daisy when it's working um and it's and it's running is that you have the main programs if you like that, that are running the game and creating the graphics and the sounds and, and and stuff like that we don't have access to them what we have access to are, are all these little data files that that main program can then pull in so this for example this is the types file so this tells you all about the stuff 
that's in the game in terms of items and loot and zombies and things like that um, and it tells the game how many of these things it should spawn in so let's take a look at the top so the first thing is an ACOG optic okay, which is just the scope that goes on some of the, the guns and it's saying that nominal is 15 so there should be 15 of them um, the lifetime of this thing is 7200 seconds so if it just spawns in in the world if the game spawns it in it should just kind of sit there for 7200 seconds if nobody inter interacts with it or so looks at it picks it up or anything like that and if nobody does that after 7200 seconds it'll despawn it'll disappear you'll never see this because there's, there's, <laughs> there's things in the, in the game to do that um, restock means that the game will only add another one every 1800 seconds um, and it'll start adding new ones in this is the minimum thing at 8 so uh, if it goes down to 8 it'll start loading them back in and quant min quant max you can ignore this for this particular item if an item has something inside like a like a magazine for a gun then this will matter and this is a percentage so imagine if this was a magazine for a gun um, you if you said quant min 50 and quant max 100 the gun that magazine was spawning between 50 on beat and 100% full of bullets and then we've got some flags down here these these are quite interesting so when the game's trying to figure out how many of these are on the map so it's saying well we should really have 15 of them it won't count them if they're in boxes or if they're in hordes or if they've been buried or if a, a player is carrying them it'll only ca ca uh, count them if they're on the map so although when it says there's 15 of these sites on the uh, so, uh, these uh, gun sites on the map actually if a player's got one on his gun the game won't count that and so you could end up with lots more so I'm showing you this because this is the sort of data that we're going to be playing around with these are the sort of things that we can change easily and change within the game to help ourselves when we're playing the game or the people on our private servers so it's, a, it's like a database of stuff that the game can access we can change we can't change the game itself um, which, which can be a bit frustrating because I know when the mods came out we were all very much about um, oh wow we'll be able to change so much things just like on the PC because we, but unfortunately we don't have access to the things the PC players have and it's important to remember that we specifically as of I'm recording this video on early April 2020 we don't have access to something called the init.c file and the init.c file is how the game sets it up before it starts and this is a special file and that file allows you to do things like change what items a player has in when they spawn so you know when you, you refresh spawning daisy and you spawn in you've normally got like a piece of food and a, uh, a glow stick um, and uh, what are they sometimes they give you some rags don't they if you wanted to change it so that you spawned in with a gun and a backpack and a military helmet and some night vision goggles you would do that in the init.c file so we can't change that all right so you know get over that we, we can't we can't change that yet also if you want to properly spawn in things like buildings um so you're physically changing the map the init.c file is 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 the proper way of doing it now you'll see online there's lots of people including you know i, th I might have i done videos about this but people like don and loads of other really great modders have come up with workarounds for this so we can spawn buildings in using something called an event however it's not ideal the way that the way that that works it should really be done differently on the on the init.c file but you can get it to work but i'm not going to cover that in this video because i'm a big believer is in the changes that you should make to your nitrado daisy uh, private server uh, should make sure that the, the server remains stable and gives you and your players a good experience and really gives you a daisy experience as well whatever flavor of daisy you want that to be so as i said at the beginning of the video what we're going to be covering here in this video is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to have undamaged loot change loot quantities add secret items which is basically colored weapons we're going to get mag spawning in full we're going to have guns spawning with mags we're going to increase the helicopter crash sites we're going to have vehicles spawning in with all their stuffs on and we're going to change item spawn areas 
and I think these are these are mods that you can do that are relatively simple to do um, and they won't affect the stability of your server too much as long as you do them right and don't go overboard um, and they can make a really good quality of life change whether that be making it easier or harder for your players on your server without you getting terribly frustrated by trying to do things that simply you know simply don't work um, so there we go so next up we're going to look at the tools you're going to need to do this stuff okay so uh, what we need to look at now are the tools you're going to use for, for doing these mods um, the first things first what you want to do is in a uh, location on your computer you want to just create a folder um, and this is the folder that we're going to download the files to from our Nitrado private server and we're going to put them in here and then we're going to back them up and then we're going to edit them in here we're not going to edit them on the servers because that, that's very tricky to do and it might not might not work properly um, the other things we're gonna you're gonna need is you're gonna need a text editor called Notepad++. Um, I'll put a link to this down in the description down below. Um, and this is just a posh version of uh, like Notepad or WordPad. But if I show you know we were looking at that types um, file on the on the website. If you use Notepad++, everything is much clearer. And this is a really powerful tool. Um, in general for doing other stuff for like find really good find and replacing and everything like that but you notice that there's, there's there's all these different colors and they they help you to identify what you're looking for but also helps you to identify mistakes as well because with these XML files with these data files we're kind of playing around with every little sort of angled uh, sort of triangle bracket or dash or um, uh, comma all that sort of stuff they're all important and if you miss them out they don't always cause obvious problems so sometimes you can be in a situation where you'll you'll make a mistake say with the ACOG optic uh, syntax how you do it you know you'll delete something by mistake but it, it'll affect something completely different and it'd be very diff diff difficult to track down so by using notepad++ notepad++ that can uh, that can uh, definitely help now the other th another thing we're going to use is the a program called the Daisy Editor. So I think if you do a Google search for Daisy Editor, like one word, D A Y Z E Editor, um, you can download this uh, really handy program from Mister X One Three Four One Five. Again, I'll put links in the description down below. But what this does is it enables you to have almost like a spreadsheet. So you remember that ACOG optic we talked about at the top here. With, with this program, you can see it tells us, actually the category of that item is it is a weapon. And it should, there should be 15 on the map. And it should last for 7,200. So we can actually go into here and we can change things <laughs> easily. Okay, and with a very small chance of us making a syntax error, making a spelling error, because we can literally go in and say, actually, I want 20 of them and we can do that and then we would save it now when we're doing this all right and I'm going to talk about this in more detail a little bit later on but we're only going to be changing things like the nominal value how many they should be on and the minimum all right we're not going to be changing other stuff because if you start messing around with this other stuff what you'll find is it doesn't quite work properly um, and you'll find this with lots of online tools You've got to be very careful because often they will introduce errors to what you're doing and they won't quite work in the way that they should. But when we're using Daisy Editor, if we're just playing around with the nominal and the minimums, everything will be absolutely fine. Um, the other things uh, we want to have access to um, as well are some information. Um, and generally, you want to have. Yeah, you want to go and take a look at the Daisy Wiki, uh, daisy.gamepedia.com forward slash daisy underscore standalone underscore wiki. But <laughs> I will put the link in the box down below. And there's loads of information here. But specifically, we want to have uh, access to the um, weapons page because this shows you all the weapons that are available. Importantly, it also shows you their associated ammunition. 
And when you're starting to mess around with values of things and say you're increasing the number of AKM machine guns, you'll also want to increase the relative number of uh, the ammunition for that particular gun as well, won't you? So that's why it's very handy to be able to know that. Now, do bear in mind, however, that plenty of the guns and plenty of the items in DayZ their in-game item uh, name will often be different to the XML file name. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Sometimes you'll be like, "Wait a minute, where's the uh, the, the ump?" is a good example of that one where it has a different name. So just just be careful with that. And you can always look it up and you know, do a quick Google search. Um, and also, you really want to have access, and you want to really want to look at this article about the central loot economy. The more you know about the way that Daisy works in terms of how it handles loot and uh, zombies and animals and stuff, the more things will make sense when you when you're starting to play around with the files. And the central loot economy, this is um, the method that Daisy uses to control what's on the map, um, because you know Livonia and Chernarus, they're massive maps. They've got thousands of items of loot on them, and constantly the game has to be looking at that loot and saying, is that loot damaged? Do we really need it anymore? Should I spawn some in? What should I spawn? Where should I spawn it? All these sorts of questions, and it does it in chunks over the map. It's a very, very complicated system, and it's pretty amazing that they can actually get it to work. So the next time you're complaining that you can't find a box of nails, read about how the central loot economy works, and you go, wow. This is amazing. They actually get this to work in the first place, but forewarned is forearmed, you know. And if if you know that, things will, as I say, start to make sense when you start doing things. And you'll also understand how it's very important when we're doing these mods. I'll use the AK for example, you know. So we go, oh god, AKM. Oh yeah. Wait a minute. There's only ten of them on the whole map. I want a thousand of them. Let's put a thousand in you'll realize that if you do things like that the central loot economy will fail and all of us all of a sudden things will stop spawning in so you'll lose everything um and you'll break this the cle you'll, you'll break the, the way things work interesting as well is when you use something like the daisy loot editor you can actually see how few of some items actually are in the map and you think well wait a minute on a on a 60 person server or are we up to 100 person servers i can't remember there's only 10 akms in the whole of the map wow and actually for example with the akm the game counts it in if it's been buried or if it's in a box or in a tin or if it's uh, an and if it's on the map so you know if people go to uh, like akms and this is public servers you know and they get these guns and they hide them you know, keep them in their 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 bases buried or something. You know, no more are going to spawn in. So you start to get a feeling of of the economy, not in terms of the CLA, but actually what what's going on, and how playing with these figures can um, can really change things in terms of quality of life for your people. So there we are. Put the links to those little tools down below, and we'll move on to the next section. One thing I wanted to talk about was the importance of having a plan when you're going to be doing your mods. There's so many different things that you can do. It's very easy to just be modding and modding and modding and modding. And then often what will happen is something will go wrong and you won't know what you've done or where you've, you, you've got to. So if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know I've put together XML mod packs. Um, so if you don't want to get into get your fingers dirty by, by by getting in there or you know you don't you haven't got the time or anything like that um, you can download these files and a, a very important part of me creating these files um, and these collections of files is having I mean I call it a change log um, so I'm just making a list of the different things that these changes do and you can also use this when you're starting a new project a new you know set of mods or in, on modding um, ignore the bit at the top about you know <laughs> I'm not responsible if something goes wrong, um, but you'll see. You'll see. I've made a list of things that I want to do uh, as part of these mods, mods, and I've just put done when I've done them and tested them. So, change log. Ch chance of items spawning in damage that greatly decreased. Done. Added one more bear. Added one more wolf. Done. Increase potential heli crash sites from three to six. Add the C-130 cargo plane. Done. So I can use this as a reference for myself about what I'm going to do and when I've done it and also if I'm releasing these public I release this file with the 
with the other files so that people can read through them and know what they expect. So there we go. Have a list. I mean, this is just a simple text file. I'm using Notepad++ to fill it in, but it could be, you could be using Google Docs, you could be using Word, you could be using a scrap of paper, you could be using a note on your phone, anything like that. But just have a list of the things that you want to do. Because also then, when you've done them, you, you reach an end, and that's when you do the reinstall process. You put the files up, and you do a little bit of testing, and then you crack on, you know, instead of being caught in this constant grind of modding and modding, oh, what if I try this, what if I do this, what if I do this? Give yourself a start and an end point so that then you can go back to enjoying Daisy and playing <laughs> Daisy uh, as it's meant to be experienced, well, the way that you want it to be experienced. So now we're gonna do our first XML mod. Um, and it's one of the easiest to do, and it's one of the most effective. So we're gonna be changing whether items can spawn in damaged or not on your server. You know, you probably all come across a thing where you pick up some clothing and it's dirty, or pick up some rags and they're dirty, or a gun that's, that's badly damaged. Do this mod, everything will be spawning in pristine, and uh, everyone will be happy because, yeah, it's just, it's just a nice quality of life thing. So we're on the dashboard in our Nitrado server. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the file browser. And we're going to click on here. And we're going to click on Daisy PS Missions here. And then we're going to click on Daisy Offline Chernerus. Or again, you know, it could be Enoch if you're running Livonia. We're going to click on here. And the file we're looking for is called Spawnable Types. So if we just scroll down, you see you've got spawnabletypes.xml. And this little one here when you hold your mouse cursor it says download so we're gonna we're gonna click on that so that's downloaded if I open it in the folder a uh, showing folder here it is in my download so there's the little folder I've got beginners guide mod so I'm just gonna transfer it over to there and then we're gonna go into this file and then we're gonna copy it and then we're gonna paste it so we've now got a copy of spawnable types as well. And this copy is the original version. So if something goes wrong, we can go back to that one. It's very important throughout this process, create backups of the original version. So if something goes wrong, you can go back to that. So now we can right click this and I can go edit with Notepad++. You might have to open up Notepad++ and open it from there, but we'll click on that. Let's get rid of that one, we don't want that. So this is now opened in uh, Notepad++. Plus Plus. Um, as you see, it looks similar to the other file we were, we were looking at. And all we're looking at is up here. See this here? Let me just highlight it. Damage min 0.3, damage 0.7. And for everything in the spawnable types folder, which is basically every item in the game, <laughs> this these little numbers affect it. And these are a percentage. Okay, so damage min, damage max. So something that has a max damage of 0.9 or 1, like 1 I guess, would be ru 1 would be ruined, so you can't use it anymore, and what um, point and um, 0.1 would be pristine. So what I do is I just change this to damage between 0.1, maximum of 0.2. I guess that might mean something spawns in um, worn, but I'm pretty sure most of it is 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 pristine, and that is all we have to do. So now all we do is we click on the save item, like that. And that has now saved that. If we then go back to our file here uh, on our Nitrado, if you come down to the bottom, see it says upload file. Sorry, stop the server first. And then uh, you should always stop the server when you're doing this sort of stuff. Um, and then we would click upload file go to my downloads beginners guide mods spawnable types open that then uploads it and then that will have changed and then what you would do is then you could then um, restart the server um, and that will start to, to change things this brings up a very important point though. Remember how I was talking about how um, the, the central loot economy, 
spawns items in and all the items have a have a lifetime of how long they'll they'll stay on the map before they disappear before the game makes them disappear and spawns them somewhere else just because you've changed this uh, XML file to say, look, I don't want anything to spawn in damaged, that will only affect new things that are spawning in damaged. And so all the stuff that's already on the map will still be the state it was. The only way that you can get these mods to work for fresh is if we do a reinstall. Don't do that now. I'm going to show you how to do that at the end. So bear that in mind with all of these mods that we're doing they'll start to affect your server but the stuff the item the loot that's already there is already there so for example when we start to add in um, cars that have uh, all their bits on them the game isn't going to replace the ones that are already there with the, with with your new ones no 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 those old ones have to despawn first and then the game can spawn the new ones in so Whenever you do this sort of thing, and then you go in and you test it, perhaps, you go, well, it doesn't seem to have worked. If you haven't done a clean reinstall, it could be because the game is, 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 is slowly, and so this can take quite a long time sometimes, especially if people are interacting with items, you know, they'll stay on the map, hasn't a chance to clear them, start again. So there we go, that's our first XML mod. How easy was that? And a really powerful one, a one that will make the lives of your players on your server so much easier. So, the next juicy mod we're going to look at, um, this is probably the one you're looking forward to the most, is how to change the number of items in your DAISY and Nitrado private server. Now, this is going to be a little bit more complicated, but bear with me. Once, once you've got used to the routine of it, it's fairly easy. So, we were in um, this folder. We want to go into the DB folder. So, you click on that. And the file we're interested in is this one here types.xml this has all the different types of stuff that is on our daisy so we click on download so then we go into the folder there it is now I'm just gonna drag it all right drag it over to here now it's changed the name there must already be a types in this folder so we're just gonna rename this one first back to just types and then we're gonna make a copy of it as we always do we're going to paste that in here so we've got a copy of types and then we're going to open this with notepad plus plus so there it is but where we're going to be doing the heavy lifting with this is actually with daisy editor so go to um, where you've got your daisy editor let's think where I've mine's here mine is uh, da, 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 daisy editor says so open daisy loot edit load and then it's in downloads it's in beginners guide mods I want to open up types now what's going to happen let me just expand this as we change things in here and save them they will change in sorry in Notepad++, but it's going to come up with a prompt to save the changes. So the way we're going to do this is we're just going to be changing things in this file here and then acknowledging it in the other one, just in case we need to have a look around for it. And this is where having access to um, the Daisy wiki, you know, just having the page open with all the different weapons and kind of what their in-game names are but again they might be different when you're actually in the files becomes very very useful i remember we've got um I've, I've got weapons here but obviously the foods um and the tools and everything they're all here on the daisy whip wiki and all you can do now is you can change the the, the the order of stuff so this you could sort this by category of weapons we could sort it by tools or food or that sort of stuff and we can simply we can go down and we can just start changing values now there's a lot of stuff here <laughs> okay there is an awful it's just in alphabetical order at the moment there is a lot of stuff here so what i tend to do is i like to change uh, or order it by category like so and if we scroll down there's all the clothes there's all the containers there's all the food there's all the tools and then because i know you're probably all interested in weapons so here we go so this is where we've got all the weapons and you can go down and you can go Ooh, right okay 
what, what do we want to change? And this is, you know, this is why you have the list. So, AKs, right? Okay, so the AKM. So let's say, oh, actually, I don't want 10, I want 20. So we could change that to 20. So we're changing the nominal to 20. So we're telling the game, look, I want 20 of these on the map. And I want you to, this is important, you change this. You need to increase the um, uh, minimum as well. Otherwise, it won't start adding any more in until it gets to this figure. So we want to change the minimum to 15. All right. And then we say we press save. So save that. If we go back in here, go into Notepad++, it says, oh, this has been modified. Do you want to reload it? So we just say yes. Now, we might not be coming back to Notepad++, but I like to have it in there. Now, don't mess around with any of this other stuff, all right? <laughs> just, just, just leave it alone. As you're going through here, though, you want to be taking a little note of how much stuff you're adding in or taking away. Because as you'll know, the game runs just about on our Xboxes, on our PlayStation 4s. But if you introduce too many things, too many new items of loot, without taking stuff away, chances are it's gonna be crashing. You know, and don't introduce too much new stuff, especially if you haven't had experience of a private server. So quite often people will buy a private server because they've been on public servers and they're just sick and tired of not being able to find anything. You know, you just can't find, you might find the odd submachine gun and shotguns and maybe, if you're lucky, um, something like a, uh, you might find a Mosan or an SKS, but you you know, you won't find any M4s, you won't find any AKs, you won't find any AK-74s, you won't find any FALs or the LARs, um, VSSs, you just won't find them. Because on public servers, that stuff's all gone, it's all sitting in people's bases, you know? But when you actually have a private server, you'll be very surprised when you start going on it. You'll find stuff pretty pretty easily. And you'll be like, oh, wow. So what I'm saying is don't add too much stuff because you will find it anyway. And generally, if you add stuff, you want to take it away. So we've added, what, another 10 AK. So I would make a note of that on a bit of paper saying plus 10. And then what you would do is that with things like um, uh, the tools, you may want to take out the chem lights, the uh, the glow sticks, because say with my servers, well we don't really have nights. There's no need to have these glow sticks. So I could take, you know, ten off here. So do we really need fifty blue lights? Well we don't. So I would take ten off here. So let's take that down to forty. Remember to change the minimum as well. So we can change that down to twenty. And let's save that. As well. I like to save things as we're going along. And so you're adding stuff in, but you're taking it away. You're adding stuff in and taking it away. Now, the DAISY developers have taken an awful long time to get to the position where we, are, where we are in terms of loot balancing. And it's still not great. When you do start playing around with adding extra loot in and things like that, you will often get to a situation where things become unbalanced. Where, for example, if you add a lot of guns in, you'll, you'll run into a military base like a barracks and there'll be... Tw there'll be there'll be five M4s <laughs> scattered around. And that's just that's just kind of the what happens. And because the way that Daisy looks at uh, portions of the map in turn, as it starts to decide where to put stuff in, um, often it will dump stuff. And that's why it's also very important that you don't mess around with these lifetime values. You know, don't start changing to zero. Don't think, well, actually, if I want, if I want 50 M4s, I want them all to spawn in fast so my people can find them. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you do that, you'll definitely end, end up with piles of guns in the same place. You want that delay so that as the game is looking at different areas of the map, it gives it a chance to spawn things in different places and move them around. And also, I'm, I haven't seen any written evidence of this, but I think that when you start a new server and you start the loot process, it probably takes quite a few cycles, a few days, maybe even weeks, for the central loot economy to really sort itself out and start spawning and despawning items in. Because when it first creates the game, it's gonna spawn everything in that it can. Um, and I think it takes it a while to start despawning stuff in and really start to randomize stuff where stuff is. Um, so don't sweat it if straight away things start to be a little bit odd now we did just mention we changed the uh, AKM to 20 
uh, didn't we? So we really need to have a look at the AKM and see what bullets it takes. So go down there. There it is. The KAM, <laughs> as it's called. So that takes 762 by 39s. Um, and there's a 30 round mag. So first things first, let's what we want to do then is we want to find the 762 ammo right so ammo here we go. ammo 762 but we really want the boxes uh, 762 by 39 that's loose stuff ammo box this is where when you go over to doing it by weapons and not doing it by um, uh, alphanumeric that it can be difficult to find stuff let's have a look see if we can find it In fact, sometimes it's easier if you go back to your types in here. If you do Control F in here, and we do, if we look for 39, so 545 by 39, no. 762 by 39, what do they call it? Ammo box, seven. so the item, the thing we're looking for is called an ammo box 762 by 39. So if we go back to here, should be at the be beginning ammo ammo uh, ammo box ammo ammo box Let's see if we can find it that's loose stuff ammo box so it could have a space in it Bear with me. I'm going to not edit this out because I want to show how difficult it can be f to find stuff sometimes. Right, what we'll do, let's go back to alphanumeric. Let's go up to A. Here we go. So this is now in reverse alphabetical order. Click on there, right? So, ammo, 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 ammo box. Here we go. Ammo, bo ammo box, seven sixty two by thirty nine twenty round. So that's the one we wanted to find. So th there's normally thirty five of those boxes over the whole of the map. So I don't know. Let's dub. Let's double it. Let's change it to seventy. Make sure we change the minimum up as well. So let's change that to sixty. Let's save that. Let's go into Notepad++ and just say, yeah, we want to update that. So that's kind of a, a showing you how you can use Notepad++ with the Daisy Loot Editor to, to find things and then adjust them. Now, the other thing that we needed to find was we want the 30 round mag, don't we? So now if we go back to here, um, what we can do, go back to here, and if we just change that to mag uh, find next mag ak 101 mag ak 7 right there we go so we know that the name is the mag akm 30 round so this is an alphabetical order so we can go down here Oop, where's m mag akm 30 round so there's normally 30 of these on the map at any time let's put 60 on let's change the minimum up to 50 let's save that let's just uh, update that one and so as you can see we've now changed the number now i've 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 gone around it probably in a little bit of a, a cack handed way. The way I tend to do it with, with mods is I literally, I just scroll down and I just, just looking for the ones I want to change. Uh, and I go through. Um, and you can you can add stuff in. Now, you as you're doing this, you may well see things that you think, ooh, I wouldn't mind spawning some of those in, like the AK-74 green the AK-74 Black um, and the Camo Mozan is a classic one, that's a nice one. However, don't, uh, 
you can add you can change the quantities here but as far as I'm aware they still won't spawn in because of this setting here see it says tick under crafted I think that means that you can only it'll only spawn they, they will only appear if you craft them now at the moment we don't have the ability to craft these items but whatever you do don't untick this because this editor actually puts in a wrong value then instead of putting in a zero it puts something like false and I don't think that works properly we're going to do that in a slightly different way so as you can see you can go down and you can just add stuff in generally if it's got a nominal and it's got a minimum <laughs> you know you can do that and you just just increase stuff but as I say as you add stuff take stuff away now when you're happy and you've saved it and you're done let's just um, do that what we now we've got now we've got to upload this haven't we so now we go back to our nitrado server so we're in the right folder we would stop the server we would upload the file we would go into types now you'll notice there's a types.xml original that is created by the daisy editor again it's another backup and we would just say open and then we would restart the server and the central loot economy will then start using that types file to spawn stuff into the map but again it's not going to be replacing other stuff until that other stuff has disappeared so things won't start happening straight away and again that's why you tend to do a reinstall when you've done all these mods and you're ready you do reinstall the um the day the, the occurrence of daisy wipes everything and starts again but there we go it can take an awful long time to do this but it is worth taking your time in, in doing it and going through and it often whets your appetite for adding sort of different things in to the game and uh, as i say it gives you really interesting insight into what loot is actually on that huge livonia map or that huge chernerous map at any one time right let's get on to the next section so as i alluded to a few moments ago there are secrets weapons well they're, they're not really secret they, these are items that um uh with the colored weapons that you would normally use to be able to craft in the game but, but you can't so what we're going to do is i'm going to show you how you can um add uh the uh the camo mozan into the game so you may remember when we were going through the daisy loot editor there was this mozan camo there's a black and there's a green one as well but the camo is pretty cool and you'll see here that it says nominal zero minimum zero so you may think ah if i just change that to to 10 as the nominal then the game will want to put 10 in i've put the restock at five so when it gets down to five it'll restock them it'll do it it won't unfortunately because it, there's this crafted item and also the game doesn't know where it should put this gun so for these things we're not actually going to be using the daisy loot editor we're going to be using this baby we're going to be using notepad plus plus and all we're going to do we're going to click somewhere and we're going to type uh, control f and we're going to look for mo this is where i can't spell mozan how do you spell mozan is it, is it mozan like that it is and what you can do is you can leave this open and so we've got the normal mozan mozan black mozan black mozan camo so let's close that now so here is the Mozan camo, and as we can see, nominal zero, restock zero, quant min, quant max, uh, crafted one, counting map zero. So there's a couple of things we need to change, and in fact, the easiest way to do this is to, in fact, just copy the values from a gun that definitely spawns in. So if we scroll up a little bit, You'll see that the the Mozan 9130, so the standard Mozan, um, th this spawns in. M nominal, there should be 70 of them. It'll start restocking them when they drop down to 60. The lifetime is 7,200. There's no gap between restocking them. So if we go down here and we start copying from where it says flags. So if we go flags and we copy this, and we copy down to where it says type. And we copy that bit and then we scroll down 
to the Mosan camo and we copy over the top of where it says flags to over the top of where it says type we paste that what that means now is that we've given the game the instructions on where this should spawn and all we need to add now is we need to just change the nominal so we change the nominal to say I mean I don't know about you but I, d I don't really want 70 of these things but maybe maybe we we'll want I don't know, 15 of them spawning in. You know, because you want the, you want this cool stuff to be a little bit rare, don't you? So when people find it, they're like, oh, wow. And the minimum, let's say 10. And then let's take a look at the, these things that weren't on there before. In fact, we can c compare these with the, with the green one down here. The first obvious one is when you look across the flag. So this is the indicator that tells the game how it should count them in the map. We've now changed it so well count them when they're in the map and the and the crafted is zero. Where the Mozang green, you can say count the map, yes, but the crafted is one, so it's only counted there. Also, you can start to get an idea of what these things mean down here. So it's a weapon, obviously, but these things, the usage name, these are telling the game where it should spawn them. So what this is saying is when you want to spawn in the Mozan 9130 camo or the normal Mozan, you should be spawning in towns and villages and hunting places. So you, often you'll find these guns, you know, on a hunting platform, won't you? And it's value tier two and tier three. Now, these relate to the distance into the map that you have to get to, and it's a bit of a bit of a rough kind of way of describing it. But if you can imagine the highest on on Chernerus anyway the highest value item so you know the, the best stuff like the m4s um assault rifles there there will be like tier four sometimes tier three and they'll be up in the top left hand corner of Chernerus, you know where like the northwest airfield is or up by tizzy all the way up there so they're difficult to get to whereas things like the um double barreled shotguns or the pump action shotguns um, and that's sorry, and that's tier three and tier four will be um, maybe tier one or tier two. So they'll be all around the coast, or they might just be called coast or village, and you'll find them there. And so this kind of means when you're playing Daisy, the way that you get the better loot is to move inland on Cherna. So you move away from the coasts towards the top left hand corner. On Livonia, you move south. That's the way you do it. So you're kind of get, you're starting to understand, all right, so not only are we telling the game um, what we should uh, spawn in and how many, but also we can also affect where the game spawns in. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? And also remember that we can tell the game in what type of area these items spawn in. We're not telling them to spawn in on specific coordinates. That's something that's, again, pretty difficult to do, and we're not gonna be looking at that in this this video because it's very unreliable. But you can, obviously, if you wanted to change, say, something like um, uh, the Mozan, you could then spawn Mozan, say, just as an idea, I'm gonna show you how to do this in a little bit, say, spawn guns in, in fire stations or police stations that's quite an interesting idea isn't it so you can go through and using this technique you can you can look at this and you can go through and you go ooh all right okay so m4 ooh, m4a1 green ooh so that's the the green version of the m4 assault rifle so let's go back to here let's do a control f let's look for m4a1 so there it is, so there's the M4A1. Find next, black, green. So let's close this up. So there we go, so there's the M4A1 green. As you can see, shouldn't the game's not spawning any, there's no minimum. Its crafted flag is one. Um, and although it's a category of weapon, it's not telling them what uh, usage name it should have. So again, this is another case of where we could simply copy from flags down to type from the normal M4A1, uh, copy that, go down to green, and then go over the flags down to type, paste that over the top nice and carefully, and then all we need to do is just put in our nominal. So again, I don't know, how many of you reckon we should have? Oh, 
just did a mistake edit undo um, edit undo nominal of 10 of them we're going to have a restock at five of them um, and it's military tier three military tier four sorted easy there you go and you can do that for all of the things that you find in here now what we're going to look at next as well is something a little bit special now I'm just going to show you one of these but there's lots you can do so what we're going to look at now is how you can spawn in a really secret item that isn't actually listed in types so if you look on your daisy loot edit it won't won't be there we're going to look at how you can spawn in the sword yes so what you can do is and again I'll put a link in the box down below if you go to the the daisy uh, underscore sa underscore class name underscore dump <laughs> on uh, github you'll find this fascinating collection of files and this is a collection of all the things that kind of you should be able to call on in daisy even if you can't see them in the type so if we go down to weapons related class names txt and then we scroll all the way down to the bottom he says looking for melee's stuff shotguns pistols here we go so these are melee weapons so these are the names of things we've got sword there look at that so we can spawn a sword into the game so how do we do that well what you want to do is you want to go back to your types.xml and you want to think well what would what would a sword spawn with? Are there any other items in the game that a, sp a, sp a spawn uh, a sword kind of goes with? And there is one, and it's the Great Helm. You may have come across it. It's, it's this knight's helmet. So if we do just do a search for helm, Ooh. Control F, like so. Find next. Made that mistake, didn't I? Helm. Motor helmet back. Oh, right, there's going to be loads of them in there. In fact, I tell you, let's look for Great. I think it's called the Great Helm. There it is. So we found the Great Helm. So the Great Helm, let's see where it's. So there's normally eight of them on the map at any one time. Um, its usage, its category is clothes, which you'd expect. And its usage name is hunting. Okay, so it appears near there. But kind of the, the the sword kind of goes with the great helm, doesn't it? So what we can do to easily spawn in some swords, if you just copy from type to type on the great helm, and then we, we copy that, and then we press enter, we pop that in there, we paste that. So we've now doubled this up. We've got two, and then we change the second great helm to sword like so paste make sure there's no extra spaces if we save that so now in the same places that the great helm spawns um, hunting um, now you could say well shouldn't you change category to 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 weapons and we could do that um, what you could do is if you go to uh, let's find say control F let's find an M4 uh, so you could say actually it's a weapon because that is that is what it is truly I guess isn't it copy that and if we go back to sword we could change that to weapon shut that down so there we go so that's a little bit cleaner there isn't it so there you go so that's how you can spawn in super secret things and you can find them by looking at that that file some of these things are unstable um, you'll find guns that are just kind of character models really of, of a gun maybe even with the flame still coming out like it's shooting but they don't actually load in any ammo but there's quite a lot of stuff that does work um, that you, that you may want to uh, may want to bring in but I'll let you discover that stuff for yourself and have a play around with the catch though with some of this stuff some of this rare stuff 
is that if you again if you're doing this on a live server and you try and spawn for example swords in well we've only got eight of them on the whole server so the chances of you finding them are pretty low unless you you know you put a hundred of them in but then you 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 run the risk of overloading the central loot economy and it you know and it not working so when I'm testing my I'm very lucky but when I test my mods what I'll do is I we do them all and then I save them and then I restart the server and I reinstall the server and then basically I have a period of normally about a week of play testing where I invite people in to just go around and, and look for things sometimes I tell them specifically what to look for and sometimes I just tell them to um, to uh, just just to tell me if they see anything unusual and I guess I probably should show you one final thing shouldn't I just to is it in here character gear related is it in here let's have a quick look consumables containers cooking crafting there we go that's probably one that you'll be interested in so anyway once we save that our types file again we would go back to our server we go into the folder that's got types on it we would stop the server we would upload our types that will then upload and then we could restart the server if my, my server stopped at the moment so there we go that's how you add secret things to your daisy server right let's go on to the next thing okay so Next, we're going to look at how you can spawn mags in, weapon magazines that are full of bullets already. Really nice quality of life improvement for you on your server and everybody else as well. So we're back in our types.xml file, the one we've been looking at all along. And we're just going to do a control F in Notepad++. And we're going to search for mag. Look, I've already populated it. And that takes us to the first one the mag for the 1911 seven round and you may remember we talked a little bit about quant min and quant max earlier on in the video um, and this applies to items that could have stuff inside them stuff like that ACOG site that we saw earlier doesn't have anything inside it so it's minus one for both so it doesn't apply but for this a magazine can have so what we we'll do we'll change that to 90 so that means this magazine will spawn in between 90 and and 100% full of bullets, which is cool. So if it was a 10 round mag, it'll have nine or 10 bullets. So more than enough for you to put it in a gun and start shooting. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you in the next section how to spawn in guns with bullets as well. <laughs> Sorry, guns with magazines. So you'll be able to use guns straight away whenever you find them. So now we go find next, the mag AK-101 30 rounds. So quant min. Change that to 90. I guess you could have it as 95 if you wanted. Quant max 100. Find next. Mag uh, AK74 30 round. Quant min 90. Quant max 100. Now, looking at these assault rifle magazines. Um, it just reminds me of the fact that although we can tell the magazine to spawn full of bullets we can't tell it what type of bullets again this is another one of those things that's, that's hidden away in the program files that on console we don't have access to um, and we can't run the sort of uh, actual m modification programs that they come on PC because obviously in a magazine you can have standard bullets or you can have tracer bullets as well so this will just put in normal bullets and all you do is you just keep going down, find next, just go through all of the mags. Just doing this simple change. You get the idea. Drum round. Quant mix, 90. Quant max, 100. And you just keep going and keep going and keep going until it goes, flicks back to the beginning. And obviously you want to file, sorry, hit the save button. And then what we would do is you would go to your file browser with the types, stop the server, upload your new types version. 
and then you could uh, restart the server or you're in a situation like me where my server stopped and we're just doing all these mods and then we are put them on so next we're going to look at how you can spawn in guns with magazines right so next up we're going to look at how we can get um, guns to spawn with mags and we've just made mags that spawn full so this will lead to a situation where any gun that you pick up that has a magazine in will have a full or near as full as damn it uh, magazine in now to get to this one we've got to go to a, uh, a different part so if we go back up in our file browser and we're interested in spawnable types again we did download it before didn't we in fact it probably should still be in our beginner guides yeah spawnable type so you should still have a copy of that if you haven't download it um, and that's the one we changed so if we then go into notepad plus plus and then you go file open or I've already got it open and what we want to do is we just want to find the guns now luckily in this in this file the guns are all together so if you just scroll down here we go here we go here we go Here we go. All right, there's the zombies. Weapons. So who got the weapons? Now, again, some of the names that are used to describe these weapons in the XML files are different to the in-game names. So just be careful about that. And all we're doing is we're just going down and, and let's find one that comes with one. So the first gun that should come with a mag is the Mark II or the Mark 11. I guess it's the Mark II 10 round. This is a silenced pistol. And you can see it, so it says the type is a Mark II. The attachment chance is 0.3, so it's, that's a 30% chance. If it was one, it would mean it comes with it. And the chance of uh, the of, of that is one, okay? But what we're interested in is this, 0.3. So what it's saying, if a Mark II spawns in the world, it'll have a third chance um, to, to spawn with a mag. So all we do, we change it to 1.00. So, every Mark II will spawn with a mag. CZ-75. So, let's have a look. So, again, attachment chance is 0 0.2. So, we just want to change that to... 1. Oh, you could copy and paste this, can't you? The Glock. Or the Mlock. <laughs> here we go. So, it's down here, isn't it? For the Mag Glock 15 round. So, we click in there. Change that to 1. The FNX 45. Where's the mag? Right, so the top. So. Now, you'll notice the other things I'm leaving as random, like the suppressor and the tactical light or, or the scope in that one. Um, you might say, well, what's the reason for this? Well, I've found that with lots of mods on Daisy, if you can keep things simple, and just do the things you really want to do, the chances of things stopping and crashing and not working as as well or at all go to, goes down significantly. So I quite like the fact that when you pick up a gun, whether that be an M4, an AK, or, or a Mlock, you know, you've got a random chance of it having some other attachments. Uh, I really like the idea of it spawning in with a magazine and that magazine being full of bullets so that you can literally put, pick that gun up and start using it straight away. But whether an M4's got a, a scope on it or not, I'm not really, not really that bothered by it. The only one that is different for that, for me, is the, um, it's probably the SKS and the Mosans. I like them to spawn in with an optic. So that's why on these guns, I'm only just adding the mag as 1.00 and nothing else. So here we go. So we've got the MP5K which, what's it called in the, uh, it's called something else in the game, is it the GS5K or something in the game? So, it can have all these things on, but the only one I'm turning to 100, to 1.00, oh, sorry, is the mag. Everything else um, is nice and random. Yeah, and that's fine, I'd like to keep it that way. So you carry on going through that, so changing all the attachment rate above the mag to 1.00, oh, oh. and then when you get to the, Mosan. So here we go. Here's the Mosan. Um, in fact, there's another. So the Winchester 70, 
the kind of cowboy gun. I want that to spawn with a scope. So let's change that to 1.00. And the Mosan. So it's got an attachment chance of 1. So this is sometimes Daisy logic doesn't work and the attachment is 0.005. So let's that change that to 1.00. And same with the SKS, semi automatic uh, rifle. Change that to 1.00. And then actually, while we're here, we might as well do the AK. So where's the AKs? AK mag, 30 round, down the bottom, attachment chance 1.00. But then it gives us a 0 0.3 chance there, so we change that to 1.00. And there we go. And so you simply go through there, go through all of the guns, change all of the attachment chances on just the mags to 1.00. Um, and on those, like the SKS and the... Um, and the Mosand, you can change them so that they get the optics. But leave all the rest, because you're increasing a chance of, of an error creeping in. And if the game has to put all the other attachments onto all the guns when it's trying to spawn them in, again, it's putting more stress, I think, on the server as well. Where this definitely worked. I've tested this. It works. It's consistent. And you shouldn't have problems with uh, the CLE, the Central Loot Economy, crashing. So there we go. That's how you make guns spawn in with magazines. Obviously, though, <laughs> you have to save it, and then you need to go into uh, this particular file where the um, spawn of types is, hit the upload, upload your spawnable types, and then you would restart the server. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is how to increase the number of helicopter crash site spawns. If you're new to Daisy, you might have never come across one of these things. Um, if you've been playing Daisy a while, you've probably still only come across a handful because they're very difficult to find. So if we go into the DB folder, and what we're interested in here is events XML. So we're going to download the events XML. We're going to check it out in the folder. We're going to copy it into the beginner guide mods that we're doing. We're going to make a copy of it. And then we're going to open it in Notepad++. Now, we've talked about types already. That's all about the stuff that's in the game, the items, the loot, if you like. We talked about spawnable types. We changed um, guns spawning in with magazines. So this is stuff that spawns in on the world. When it spawns in in the world, this is how it spawns in. And events is things that are triggered in the world that spawn other things in. So not loot, other stuff. So zombies, animals, um, uh, helicopter crashes, cars, all that sort of stuff. So this is another really important file. Now the file we're in, the bit we're interested in is the helicopter crashes. And this is a really easy one too. So if we do control F and we just look for heli, we go straight down and you'll see it's appeared static heli crash. Now in the whole of your map on uh, Livonia or Chernarus, there's only ever excuse me, three helicopter crashes uh, maximum at any one time. Three over that huge map. And also, if you look at the live time, each, map, each one only lasts 2,500 seconds. So if we bring up the calculator, what's that? 2,500 divided by 60. So 41 minutes. So you'll have three helicopter crashes and they'll only survive for 41 minutes before they get put somewhere else. So imagine if you're looking for a static helicopter crash, um, and if you haven't come across them before, there, there's two. There's a crash that uh, looks like American UH-1 Huey helicopter that has smoke coming off it, and there's one that looks like a Russian uh, helicopter that doesn't have smoke coming across it. And the helicopter crashes are special because these are the places where you find dynamic event loot, things like the VSS or the uh, LAR, which is the FAL. Or there's some super duper ghillie suits as well that, and they're only on these uh, crash crash sites and also you get zombies spawn there as well you know the, the the dead crew of the of the the helicopter crash so that they're cool things but they're so rare that um it's just random whenever you come across one super super random i think when i was on the public servers i probably came across like three in total over a period of about f f f uh, six months probably um, 
and the other problem is when you're on public servers because all the guns have been taken anyway previously you know you never find anything good um, but they're exciting things to have um, so what we're going to do is we are going to change the static helicopter crash we're going to double it in fact no we're going to take it up to 10 let's have 10 of these buggers so we're going to have 10 helicopter crash sites now don't worry the file that looks where it can put these and puts them into the map that there's loads of potential places for it to go and I haven't really talked about this stuff but with distance radius cleanup radius and safe radius these make sure they're the way that the game doesn't spawn in a helicopter crash right in front of you you know so when you're running along you don't all of a sudden a helicopter crash spawns what these what these um, figures do is they go right okay one of these um, will spawn when a player is this far away and um, when he's this far away that's when it can despawn that's why you don't see things despawning in front of you even when their lifetime is up so we change the nominal to 10 um, minimum and max doesn't really matter because we're just saying there should be 10 of them and then what we do is if we come down here we need to change the max and the min differently so we can change the max up to 10 the minimum max for that one up to 10 um, and I would leave the the other one as as one. So you're leaving some stuff random. Remember, the, you don't want Daisy to be. I, I think anyway, you don't want Daisy to become everything to become too easy. You know, you want that element of surprise, that element of delight when you come across this stuff. By do, but by doing that simple change, we've gone to a ten possible ten helicopter crash sites uh, across the map. Um, and that means that people are much more likely to come across them and have that delightful moment when you go, especially if you don't know them, know about them already, you go, oh, what's this? And then you go up and you find a VSS sniper rifle. And you're like, oh, wow, how cool was that? So there we go. That's how you make more static helicopter crashes appear on your Nitrado Daisy private server for PlayStation or Xbox. Oh, uh, no, 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 go back, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously you save it I keep forgetting to do this bit as well you save it you go back to the file where the events are and then you upload your events and then you would restart the server or do a clean thing right there we go so let's let's get on to the next bit okay so now we're going to look at how you can make vehicles spawn in in spawn into the map complete so they're going to have all the doors all the tires all the you know the the, um, the bulb in it and they're going to have a can of fuel in the boot unfortunately again because we don't have access to that init.c file that pc users do or probably some other sort of files you can't make a vehicle spawn in full of fuel which is a shame you can't make one that you can just jump into but we can do it so it's as easy as possible so that the all the player has to do is find the vehicle, take the fuel can out of the boot, fill the fuel, take that fuel can to the nearest water source, whether that be a river or a pump, fill up, take that back, fill up the radiator, and then the car is good to go. Um, and as of the April 2020 when I'm recording this, you should be thankful that you don't have to put oil in like we used to have to with vehicles. You used to have to go and find all these, these um, tins of oil as well. So what we're interested in and we should have this open already in our notepad plus plus is the cfg spawnable types xml file um it could be that uh if you're just jumping into this part of the video you'll want to find that in one of the main uh directories on your file browser you'll see spawnable types there it is and what we're looking for is the um we're going to start with the ada the four by four so if we go short f do they call it the ada in this or the might actually i think they call it off road let's put off road will it find it no just call it off there it is off road hatchback there we go now again what i would recommend is don't change it so that all of the vehicles uh, spawning with everything just a particular class of vehicle and i tend to think in keeping with the post-apocalyptic theme of daisy 
I think you know the vehicle that people would want to try and keep running would be the off-road, would be the little 4x4 Jeep, wouldn't it? Though if you've ever driven one of these in Daisy off-road, they don't do particularly well. So here we go. So this is called it's called the Ada in game. Uh, it's the off-road hatchback. It comes in different colours. You see there's a blue. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna change the first one and then we're gonna copy and paste everything over. So as you can see, we've got hatchback wheel, hatchback wheel, hatchback wheel car radiator car battery and all we're going to do is we're just changing the attachment chance to 1.00 like this like that uh, I guess you could I don't know if this is any faster. <laughs> I'm so crap with a mouse. Oh, what do we do there? Edit, undo. Paste. I still, I think I'm quicker just typing this, aren't I? There we go. So we've done all of them because the next one is the the hatchback blue. So let's just go through and just just double check that they've all got a 1.0 next to them. Okay. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to put something in the boot. And all you do if you want to put something in the boot or the, the trunk of the car, you just add it as an attachment. So what we do is if we just copy this bit about the trunk. Again, be careful to copy everything. So if we just copy that, we press enter there and just put a space in. We paste that. Now if we just find the name of the fuel can, so if we go back to types and do control F, I think it's I think it's called fuel. Let's have a look, see what it's called. Uh, can is it? There's gonna be loads of cans, medium gas canister. Sardines can. Spaghetti can, tactical bacon, tuna, tuna, animal. Baked beans, can opener. Is it fuel? Um, gas. I think it's called a gas can. Can us the gasoline. There we go. We get there in the end. <laughs> so all we do is we copy can us the gasoline very carefully. We go back to spawnable types. And where we've got these double hatchback trunk, we now paste this over the top. And just and again, oh, whenever you do anything, just have a quick look and right. Does it all look right? Are there any funny colours? Does the spelling look right? Have we missed out any inverted commas or parentheses or anything? So there we go. So now we know that um this vehicle is going to spawn in with all the bits on it and a can of fuel in the back. So what we can do now is we can copy everything from under off-road hatchback to type. So if we copy all that, then we just go to off-road hatchback blue. And we go all the way down to type and then we paste. And then we've got off-road hatchback white. We paste. There we go. And then we're into the civilian sedan. So there we go. So the 4x4 Ada will always spawn in with all its bits on it and a can of fuel in the back. In fact, at this point as well, 
you may want to go over to your events and if you do control F and look for off road we can find the event that spawns these in the off-road hatchback and it says normally there should be 10 of these but tell you what why don't we double that why don't we have 20 of these with a minimum of 12 and a maximum of 20 let's come down here and let's say we can have a maximum number of I don't know 10 of them 10 of them 10 of them and that way this vehicle let's save that save that no way that vehicle oh where have we gone yeah that vehicle the aid of the off-road hatchback they're going to spawn in with everything on them and there's going to be a few more of them on the map as well um, again I would be very very wary about doing this to all of the vehicles because something will probably go wrong and it won't work by all means give it a go and if it works for you happy days but again take those small steps just do a little bit of a time a little bit of a time and then obviously you know you should be used to it by now but we save spawnable types we save events you go back into your file browser and you upload those change files to the relevant folder there we go so in this uh, almost final section of this video i wanted to talk about how you can change where um, things spawn we kind of covered it a little bit earlier as well but specifically let's say you wanted to do something like um, change a little bit of the story of the daisy experience on your server um, uh, like, you know, almost a little bit of a role-playing thing so let's imagine that on uh, in daisy what what happened was um, as the zombie apocalypse was happening and the emergency services were trying to stay in control um, weapons were issued not only to the military but also to the police um, and the firefighters and you could even say medics as well you know in order to control the situation they were they were issued with more weapons and let's say they were issue, issued with um, submachine guns like the mp5k or the ump 45 yeah how could you then make those items spawn in clinics and fire stations i mean in police stations you do get the scorpion and you do get the pistols but let's say you wanted a better class of weapon you want the submachine guns issued how do you do that well what you need to do is uh, a couple of things are, are interesting so you've got your types.xml that's the one we're going to be editing um, and also a real handy um, file to be looking at is and again i'll link this in the description down below is that is the central loot economy article on the daisy uh, wiki at uh, gamepedia and if you scroll down it gives you a list of the different areas and types of places that are, the, are the different classes of things in daisy so as you can see we've got coast farm firefighter hunting industrial medic military village town school prison police and office and items normally have a usage uh, associated with them and this tells the CLE the central loot economy where they should be spawning on them in so that's why you only find m4s and AKs in military places that's why you find firefighter axes in fire stations that's why you find painkillers in and around um, clinics and hospitals because they have these usage uh, tags so if we go back to uh, um, types.xml um, well, let's go back to the classic ACOG optic. As you can see, its usage is military. So the ACOG optic will only spawn in or around military places. Now, it's remem remember, if we were to look up something like Control F, surgical gloves, right? So surgical gloves, blue. Here we go. There's a different one. So you'll see the usage name for that is medic. But that doesn't mean they will only ever spawn inside hospitals or the little clinics, you know, the pharmacy places. They'll spawn around the outside of them as well. So that's why you'll sometimes find, especially me me um, me medicinal items, you'll find them in sheds around and near to hospitals or the little clinics, you know, those little blue buildings. So so remember that as well. So let's, let's go back to what we were saying. So we were saying, well, I tell you what, it would be pretty cool if uh, submachine guns spawned in, say, fire stations as well, 
wouldn't it? Yeah, that that would be that would be really cool because that's that story, isn't it? Of the firefighters were trying to stay in control, but the zombies were there. So the military said, "Look, you have these submachine guns to help." So first things first, let's have a look up. Let's let's look up, say, firefighter. Here we go. So there's uh, not what we want. That's a zombie firefighter axe. Here we go. So let's shut that. So the fire. If we look at the usage name. So the usage name for a firefighter axe, which as we know spawns inside fire stations, is firefighter. So if we just copy that there, like so. And now, if we then just do a search for something like um, uh, MP5K, which is the submachine gun, we've got usage name. So what we could do is underneath weapons, if we paste in firefighter, if I press the right button, okay, just clean up that usage name is firefighter. So the MP5K, well, I forget, is it GS5K in the in the game? Will now spawn in um, uh, fire stations. In fact, and we could do in fact if we if we do search for. Um, Uh, surgical again. So there, his name is medic. So we could copy that. We could go back to the MP5K. And actually, we so actually we also want them in clinics. And then referencing. You know these different areas you can see how you could change things so a classic one could be say you wanted a more of an experience where when people spawn in and they start hunting around you know the little boats and the buildings and the the jetties and are on the coast and the lighthouses you could add uh, the usage name coast to things like shotguns or pistols so they would then spawn in along the coast and that would give you more of a uh, kind of a maybe, maybe even a PvP experience, you know, because people spawn in, they pick up a gun, the gun's got a magazine in it already, that magazine is already full of bullets, they're good to start fighting, and then you can sort of crack on that way. Um, something else you might want to do as well is if you look up, say, for example, M4A1, the assault rifle, you'll see that the M4A1 only spawns in at tier three and tier four military places and you may say well actually you know i've bought this private server for me and my mates to play on and we don't really want to be hunting all the way around chernerus to find one of these uh, m4a1 assault rifles so why don't we do this why don't we copy that and we paste that in there and we change that to tier one that to tier two and now you'll be able to find M4A ones if we save the file, of course. <laughs> and obviously, then we uh, upload it, yeah, as I've shown you how to do previously, uh, into DB folder. So you'd upload it into that one so it replaces uh, the types file there. You'd now find M4A1 assault rifles. You can do this with whatever you want in the lower tier military places. So that's the places that are nearer the coast on Chernerus or nearer the north of the map on Livonia. It's a very powerful thing. Um, obviously, you've only got so many M4A1 spawning in, so you may want to slightly increase the number of them. Um, but you can do all sorts of cool things, you know, that way. One of my favourite things to do is is putting the submachine guns in fire stations. And in, and in police stations and then also putting things like the Mozans into towns and villages more so that you, know, you can pick up a scoped weapon straight away and also put in shotguns near the coast because the beauty of having a shotgun near the coast is you know you can pick it up and start using it straight away the only catch with things like the shotguns and the Mozans and the SKS's is, is that they kind of have you have to put the bullets into them or they have an internal magazine and at the moment um, we don't really know how to on consoles make those weapons spawn in full of bullets um, You've still got to find some bullets to put them in. So there we go That's how you change the locations of items in Daisy Okay, so we've covered a lot of stuff 
in this video so what we need to do now is put what we've edited into effect on our server as we've been going along um, we've been uploading the new XML files as we've been editing them um, so what we need to do now is we need to kind of make this uh, make this stick and the way that we do that is we're going to do a fresh install now a fresh install is going to wipe everybody's progress and their characters on the server so again this is why at the beginning of the video I was kind of saying that if you want to do mods it's best to do them on an empty server where people haven't got any progression so that you won't be pissing them off by by wiping everything out if you do do these XML changes um, these mods and you don't do a reinstall many of the things probably won't come into effect for a long time if ever the, the best way that we can ascertain is always to do a reinstall because again on console with Nitrado we don't have access to an ability to wipe um, persistence it's called you know to say right get rid of all the loot and start afresh with these XML files we don't have a way of doing that apart from doing a complete complete install reinstall so bear that in mind the reinstall is a very dangerous thing because <laughs> it's going to wipe everybody and wipe everything and start again but if you're doing mods this is the best way to make things work so we've got all our new XML files uploaded and what we're going to do is we're going to go to settings in general down here and we're going to come down and we're going to make sure that the reset XML to default isn't ticked that's very 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 important because otherwise when we do this it's going to start it's going to reset everything we're going to lose all our changes and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be hitting the reinstall button here and then we're going to be refreshing this uh, or, or going back to this server settings general page to make sure that this reset mission XML to default hasn't become ticked when it does become ticked because it does we untick it and then we save the changes okay now what will happen is the host name will disappear our server time multiplier all this stuff will disappear our whitelist will disappear our ban list will disappear so make sure you've got all that stuff saved so let's do it reinstall are you sure you want to do this oh yes so it's starting the process and what I do is I just keep refreshing this and I'm looking for the host name to disappear and when the host name disappears and goes back to Nitrado I know that that's when the XML thing will have changed. So that's good. There we go. So it's changed. So when I scroll down, click that, save changes. And that way I know that all my XML files are going to be saved throughout the process. So if we scroll back down again now, we'll see that's unticked. So at this point, this is where you can go in and you can start, you know, changing. It does flick out of it a couple of times. So go back to general settings. Hostname 1T. 1T scale speeder gaming. Server time multiplier is 2. Night time multiplier is 30. Reduce output log no. Log damage, log placement, log base building, log player list. Ban list none, mouse and keyboard yes, whitelist yes. I'm the only one loud in it. A scale speeder, save changes. And the server will now go through its reinstall. Um, because it was stopped start off with, I may well have to hit restart server. And then all those things that we've been working on for the past, seems like forever, will, uh, will then uh, drop into place. So the next thing is, you know, well, You've covered quite a lot of ground here, Rob, but maybe I haven't talked about many of the things that you're very much interested in. Um, and to, to take it further, you know, make sure you can get these things working. Maybe even talk to your community about you, they, what they want from Daisy. And remember, people will often think, oh, yeah, I want all this stuff, this special stuff. But always, I think always bear in mind, are you moving away from the Daisy experience? Are you going to put too much stress on the servers and the game's not going to run very well or on your PlayStation or Xbox? And that, or maybe have a play around. So the next steps really 
I would suggest one of the best resources you can use is if you join the, if you're over 18, you can come over to the Scale Speeder Gaming Discord. And again, I'll put a link in the in the show notes down below. And we have a channel called Modding Resources. And this is a collection of all the good videos and articles and um, depositories for information um, about modding Daisy, um, mainly on console, but a lot of it relates to PC as well because they've done an awful lot of work. It's all here in in one place. Um, and you can scroll down and you can watch the videos. There's videos from me, there's videos from Don Sibley, there's uh, videos from Soy Legend. Whenever I come across anything good that I think this is useful, um, it's all here. You know, there's lists of all the stuff that should be, that um, is in the game, the stuff that's hidden in the game, the lists when you start getting into modding in buildings if you want to have a go at doing that there's lists of all that sort of stuff and if you were to just watch half of these videos even if you do i mean don's videos are great watch don sibley's guides to bot modding and you'll really get to understand the potential of what you can do and you can take it further so by all means come and join the discord say hello say that you want to you're a daisy modder and i'll give you a um, a tag for that and then really what you want to be doing is you want to be going have a look at Don's channel. See if we can get on there so you can have a look at it. Don Sibley, um, fantastic Daisy streamer, um, does amazing videos. You know, this guy's found out so much cool stuff um, that you can that you can look at. Um, so there's Don, it's a really cool one to look at. Um, and then uh, there's uh, Soy Legend as well. This is another guy who's uh, really done some absolutely fantastic work. Um, I'll have to look at, I think there might be video that I haven't added to the to the file. So there we go. So, and obviously you've got my channel. I, I tend to stick to some of the more simpler forms of modding, uh, where these guys really dive into the more complicated stuff, but um, it's top stuff. And have some fun. But again, I, I will warn you, Daisy modding, can be incredibly frustrating, especially when you start trying to get into the more advanced stuff, um, like spawning in items in specific places. I warn you now, it is very, very difficult. And probably the, the hardest thing is it's very, very inconsistent as to how things work. And you might get something to work one day and then it stops working another day. So, you know, if, if, if you say that Daisy, vanilla Daisy is 100%, I would say maybe consider just pushing your mods to like Daisy plus 120 or minus you know 20 to like 80 percent. Don't try and make it 100 percent different. Don't try and make take it up to 200 percent because something will probably break. But within sort of some of the boundaries that we've talked about already today, and the advice you'll see from the likes of um, Don and um, and Soy Legend, you know you're going to get some really good stuff down. You have some fun and you'll be able to surprise yourself and the people who are on your servers too. So anyway, that's enough from me. I know this has been a long video, but thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And I'll, uh, well, I'll see you again soon.